NDP House Leader Peter Julian is calling for House Speaker Anthony Rota to step down, saying a sacred trust between the role of the Speaker and Parliament has been broken. The Conservatives are blaming the Prime Minister and his office, saying state visits are ultimately Justin Trudeau's responsibility, despite Rota saying the PM and his office knew nothing of Hunka's invite. Jewish groups are speaking out about the incident, outraged that this has happened. I wish to make a brief statement. The Speaker of the House trying to fall on his sword. I subsequently become aware of more information which causes me to regret my decision to recognize this individual. I wish to apologize to the House and I'm deeply sorry that I've offended many in my, with my gestures and remarks. Apologizing for inviting and honoring a Ukrainian member of a Nazi unit accused of war crimes to Friday's special joint session of parliament to hear from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. The PM and the rest of parliament applauding and giving Yaroslav Honka multiple ovations. The 98-year-old from North Bay relishing the moment. But afterwards, Hunka's war record came under scrutiny. A member of a Nazi Waffen-SS volunteer unit made up of Ukrainians, known as the 1st Galatian Division. The unit has faced accusations of atrocities and war crimes, but is also celebrated by Ukrainian nationalists who hold a march every year on April 28th to honor them. Jewish groups are outraged. The Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center for Holocaust Studies writes in a statement... The fact that a veteran who served in a Nazi military unit was invited to and given a standing ovation in Parliament is shocking. There should be no confusion that this unit was responsible for the mass murder of innocent civilians with a level of brutality and malice that is unimaginable. The CEO of Benai Brith posting on X, no apology is acceptable that does not also provide the public with a detailed explanation as to how this could possibly have taken place in the heart of our democracy shameful. The incident playing into the Russian narrative of its invasion of Ukraine, which was framed as an operation to root out Nazism in that country, a narrative that isn't true despite Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov's comments today. He says, we know that many Western countries, including Canada, have raised a young generation that does not know who fought whom. Fascism will manifest itself here and there, and we now see how it is trying to find its feet in the center of Europe, in Ukraine. This is what we are battling irreconcilably against. No one, including you, my fellow parliamentarians, or Ukraine, the Ukraine delegation, was privy to my remarks prior to their delivery. Rhoda took all the blame during his apology, saying the Prime Minister and his office knew nothing about it. But the Conservatives say the PM is still at fault. It is the Prime Minister whose government is responsible for both security and diplomatic vetting of everyone that comes in close proximity of a foreign leader on Canadian soil. The NDP say Rota must step down. I believe a sacred trust has been broken. It's for that reason, for the good of the institution of the House of Commons, that I say, sadly, I don't believe you can continue in this role. Regrettably, I must respectfully ask that you step aside. Trudeau wasn't in the chamber today, but government house leader Karina Gould affirmed that the Trudeau liberals didn't know about Rhoda's invite and called for the ovation for Honka to be stripped from the record. For more on this, I'm joined by Peter Grafe from the Department of Political Science at McMaster University. Peter, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. The backlash has been fairly intense. Why do you think Rhoda didn't step down in addition to apologizing? Yeah, it's hard to understand. It seems like we've seen provincially that it's very hard for people to uh, admit wrong in the sense of stepping down from their position. Certainly, it's exciting to be a Speaker of the House of Commons. You get to run the parliamentary precinct. You get a big salary bump. You get an official residence, a car and driver. So there's a lot of kind of selfish reasons why it's a lot more interesting to, to, to say, stay the Speaker than to go back to being just an ordinary backbencher. But having said that, I mean, this is a gaffe of a pretty monumental scale. Uh, the Speaker has admitted having invited this person uh, even before uh, recognized them. So there's clearly lots of opportunity to do his job properly, uh, to recognize that there might be a problem here and to have it vetted. And uh, clearly that wasn't done. 
and it was uh, produced a situation that produced embarrassment really for the entire house who trusted him to do those things and exercise judgment and potentially have some impact on Canada's international reputation. Do you think the apology will be enough for the people he offended? It's obviously not enough for some, like NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Yeah, I mean, some people like to get offended, and you know, they, they, I don't think anything he could do would be enough. But I don't think it's outrageous for members of opposition parties uh, to be upset that, in a way, they were set up by the, the Speaker to applaud somebody who, who maybe uh, they would have not applauded uh, had more context been provided. You know, they really put their trust in the Speaker to protect the reputation of the House, and, and that was not done. So for them to ask for the Speaker's resignation strikes me as... Uh, you know, quite appropriate uh, given that situation. And, and certainly with time, if Mr. Rhoda stays on, they'll find ways to work with him. But, uh, you know, I think they have reason to, to expect a more thoroughgoing responsibility. Uh, I mean, I think it's good that people say, I'm sorry, but, you know, in our system of parliament and in government, uh, people, when they make such a grave error, maybe step aside and allow the parliamentarians to decide if they want to continue with him as speaker or find someone who they might have greater trust in. The Conservatives are trying to pin this on Trudeau. Is the Prime Minister or his office also at fault here? I mean, it is hard to say, but generally we feel that the, the Prime Minister's office in Canada is trying to do too much as it is, whether they should be vetting every single person who shows up for an event like this. It seems to be asking uh, a bit much of them. Um, so in a way, you know, this is an embarrassment for Canada. It kind of shows a certain lack of seriousness in how Canada deals with uh, foreign affairs. And that's probably not helped by having uh, all of these things made into very partisan uh, attacks so that, you know, a failure of the speaker can't just be his failure. It somehow has to be Trudeau's as well. I mean, there's plenty to criticize Trudeau about, I'm sure, but uh, it seems a bit odd to bring this in, uh, you know, particularly for an opposition who was responsible for Mr. Rota getting his job in the first place in 2019. He was elected over the pre previous speaker, Jeff Regan, uh, largely with the support of the Conservatives. So... You know, in that context, the Speaker is there on the basis of the confidence of the entire House. And so I think all you know, members of Parliament should recognize that they had some responsibility in his choice. But the Speaker has to then give that responsibility back when he's really failed in, in sustaining the confidence of, of the House. How do you think this incident has impacted Canada's image? But, you know, the deeper issue of Canada probably with this case, but we also saw, uh, you know, last week in our relationships with India and so on, there seems to be a lack of seriousness in terms of, of pulling our, uh, our socks up in terms of foreign affairs and an inability of our parties to really treat these seriously as well, to understand when the partisan attack has to step back or, you know, how to phrase those partisan attacks in a manner that that's more productive of better foreign policy rather than kind of gotcha uh, positions. That's Peter Gray from the Department of Political Science at McMaster University. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure.